Now what I want to cover is output impedance as well as input impedance and an example where we look at the breadboard and we take advantage of the push-pull driver in this circuit on page 63 chapter 4 of our workbook. So what I have is this darling or this push-pull pair set up and I'm driving it from the function generator and right now what I'm doing is I'm bypassing that and to make that more clear I will go ahead and plug it down here and this is the feed coming from function generator and so now I've connected that to my speaker input and then I've got ground connected all the way up uh, the remainder of the way so now I go ahead and turn on my breadboard and maybe you can hear it I'll put the camera close by and then there's the waveform on the oscilloscope and I can adjust the frequency and so we've got a signal in there uh, let's go ahead and hit average and then hit measure to get the measurement of the signal strength and right now I've got oh, 280 millivolts 272 millivolts peak to peak of this signal coming out of the function generator and feeding the speaker and I'm grabbing the signal right at the speaker okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap the input of the speaker to this push-pull driver and then I'm gonna feed the signal into and so now you can see how much stronger it is and now I'm at 5 volts peak to peak. So I'm going to decrease the amplitude here. And so now what you can see is what we call crossover distortion, where the transistor shut off when they're going across the diode portion of the transistor's uh, emitter pins. And so here you can see it's off, turns on, off, turns on. And so that's the crossover distortion you may have heard about when it comes to push-pull drivers. And so we have, I'll shut this off now, we now have our function generator which has high output impedance, 500 ohms, going across being connected to our push-pull driver. The push-pull driver, if you remember, is being fed into the base of the transistors and that input has got some very high input impedance. So now when I look at my speaker, my speaker has 8 ohms of resistance to ground. So when I take my signal and drive it directly into the speaker, then I'm looking at the 500 ohm output impedance of my function generator feeding an 8 ohm speaker resistor and so that's why we end up with very small signal strength at the end because we only have 8 more ohms left until the signal gets to ground but when I go ahead and feed, feed my signal through my push-pull transistor driver that has very high input impedance so even though I've got 500 ohms of output impedance on my breadboard I'm still feeding a whole bunch of resistance into this circuit before it finally goes to ground so the signal stays nice and strong and then the output of the uh, BJT's uh, ends up having very low output impedance not like 500 that we have in the breadboard but something uh, on the order of 15 or 20 ohms maybe and now feeding that to the uh, speaker we get that much much louder signal coming out 